Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about pharmacokinetics of tetracyclines. So when you take tetracyclines, um, they differ in their absorption and their elimination methods. So first of all, if we talk about tetracycline and demiglocycline, both of these agents are absorbed up to 60 to 70% after oral administration. And if we talk about doxycycline or minocycline, those agents are absorbed up to 95 to 100% after being taken orally. So you can remember these two by uh, having O in their uh, initial alphabets. So both of these agents are absorbed up to 95 to 100% after being taken orally. So if we talk about tetracycline, uh, tetracycline is poorly absorbed orally and it must be administered intravenously. A portion of an orally administered dose of tetracy tetracycline remain in the gut lumen. All the intestinal flora and is excreted in the feces. So when you take tetracycline, it stays in your gut lumen and ultimately when it is present in your lumen, it will interfere with uh, flora. And flora is good for your health, but when it will alter your flora, there will be uh, some consequences and uh, which will be shown uh, to the patient uh, in the form of adverse effect. And then it is excreted out in the feces. Absorption occurs mainly in upper small intestine and is impaired by multivalent cations, by dairy products and tasted which contain multivalent cations and by alkaline pH. So absorption of this drug is actually being uh, done in small intestine. And uh, this absorption can be affected or impaired by multivalent cation. So cations, uh, which are having uh, multiple valency, those cations can form chelates or can attach with these cations and uh, there will be impairment in the absorption because they will be unable to cross the lumen membranes and they will stay in the, uh, in the gut lumen and ultimately will be excreted out of the body. So absorption will be compromised. So uh, these cations are present in different dairy products or antacids. And if, if a patient is taking uh, something in alkaline pH, it can also uh, cause the similar effect. So tetracyclines and demiclocycline should be administered on an empty stomach. While doxycycline and minocycline absorption is not impaired by food. So again, minocycline and doxycycline are having similar effect, uh, whereas tetracycline and demiclocycline are having similar effect or they have similar method of absorption, better absorption. That is, they should be taken on an empty stomach, whereas doxycycline or minocycline should be um, taken at, as whatever method the patient like because they are not being impaired by the food. So if we have to give a patient uh, doxycycline or minocycline intravenously, we have to prepare buffer, buffered solution so that blood pH could not affect the efficacy of these drugs. Tetracyclines are 40 to 80% bound by serum, serum proteins. Oral doses dosage of 500 mg every six hour of tetracycline hydrochloride produce peak uh, blood level of four to six microgram per ml. So if a patient is taking 500 gram every six hours of tetracycline hydrochloride, uh, there will be a peak blood level of four to five microgram uh, per ml. So uh, the patient will be having four to six microgram of tetracycline uh, per ml of the serum. So uh, peak level of uh, four to uh, two to four microgram per ml are achieved by achieved with a two hundred microgram dose of doxycycline and minocycline. So to achieve this uh, particular range of uh, peak levels of the drug, 
we have to give doses of 200 microgram of doxycycline and minocycline. Steady state peak serum concentration of tetracycline are 0.6 microgram per ml at the standard doses. So at the standard dose of tetracycline, uh, steady state peak uh, serum concentration of tetracycline are 0.6 microgram per, uh, per ml. Tetracyclines are distributed widely to tissue and body fluid except for cerebrospinal fluid. So if we talk about the cerebrospinal fluid, we know there are a lot of hurdles a drug has to pass through to reach cerebrospinal fluid. So if a person is taking tetracyclines, only 10 to 20% of the drug that is being present in the serum will go into the cerebrospinal fluid. So if a person is having 50% absorbed tetracycline after being taken orally, only 10 to 20% of that 50% will go into cerebrospinal fluid. Tetracycline to our placenta and are also excreted in breast milk as a result of chelation with calcium tetracyclines bind to and damage growing bones and teeth. So as we know that calcium uh, along with tetracycline can cause the um, chelation process. So chelation can cause damage to the bones or teeth. So this could uh, cause a negative effect to um, fetal. Carbamazepine, phenytoin, barbiturates, and chronic alcohol ingestion may shorten the half-life of tetracycline and doxycycline by 50% due to, in, due to the induction of hepatic enzyme that metabolize the drugs. So if a patient is taking some other drugs such as these or his um, alcoholic, so in that case, the half-life of tetracycline or doxycycline will be reduced to 50%. Why? Because there is induction of hepatic enzyme. Now, uh, if a drug is being metabolized by certain enzyme and that enzyme is being induced, which means there is over uh, working or over production of that enzyme, uh, so in that case, what will happen that that drug will metabolize by those enzymes uh, more than before. So in this way, uh, the half-life will be reduced by 50%. Tetracyclines are excreted mainly in bile and urine. Concentration in bile ex exceed those in serum 10 folds. So there are two ways of excretion of uh, tetracyclines, that is bile or urine. And in bile, uh, concentration is tenfold more than the serum. Some of the drugs excreted in bile is reabsorbed from the intestine. So as we know, there is enterohepatic circulation. They will be reabsorbed and go uh, back into the blood. And in this way, there, uh, there will be maintenance of serum levels. So 10 to 50% of uh, various tetracycline are excreted by urine. As we know, there is a glomerular filtration uh, process through which these uh, uh, drugs are being excreted out. 10 to 40% of the drug is excreted in feces. Doxycycline and tegacycline, in contrast to other tetracyclines, are eliminated by non-renal mechanisms. So these drugs are not eliminated uh, renally. So we don't have to uh, do any dose adjustments in uh, in case of patients having renal in insufficiency or renal uh, failure. Now, tetracyclines are classified on the basis of their um, action. So if we are having short acting tetracyclines, we will classify them as short acting tetracycline, and those include tetracycline as well as agricultural agent chlorotetracycline and oxytetracycline. Intermediating, uh, intermediate acting demiclocycline, 
and long acting uh, agents include doxycycline and minocycline. Based on their half lives of six to eight hours, so short acting uh, tetracyclines have half life of six to eight hours, whereas intermediate acting uh, tetracyclines have short life or um, half life of twelve hours, whereas long acting tetracyclines are having uh, half life of sixteen to eighteen percent, uh, eighteen hours. Tegacycline has a half life of thirty six hours. The almost complete absorption and slow excretion of doxycycline and minocycline allow for once daily dosing for certain indication. So doxycycline and minocycline, which are actually long acting tetracyclines, those uh, allow you to have only uh, once daily uh, dosing. But uh, by convention, we give them twice daily so that uh, we can have a um, steady state uh, serum concentration. So, this was all about pharmacokinetics of uh, tetracyclines. In next video, we will be discussing about clinical uses of uh, tetracycline.